Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a look at preload and see how preload influences cardiac output. Remember, cardiac output is the amount of blood our heart pumps out every minute, and it's around about five liters every minute. Now, preload, it's one of the factors that influences stroke volume. What's stroke volume? Stroke volume is the amount of blood our heart pumps out every contraction. So you obviously multiply that by how many times we, or our heart beats per minute, and we get our cardiac output. All right, preload, what is it? Well, first thing I need to draw up is a heart. And when we have our heart, we're also gonna have some blood vessels, but the only one I'm gonna draw up here is gonna be the aorta. Now, I want you to think about this. Your heart's going to contract, that's called systole. When it contracts, it ejects blood, and then it relaxes, and that's called diastole, and that's when it fills with blood. We're gonna talk right now about diastole. The heart is relaxed, and it begins to fill up with blood. What you'll find is right at the very end of diastole, okay? So it's right at the end of filling, immediately before the heart contracts in systole to eject the blood, you've got the end diastolic volume, that's this right here, and that is gonna be the maximum filling of the heart, but it's also the maximum stretching of the walls of the ventricles of the heart, just before contraction. This is actually preload. Preload is the maximum stretch of the walls of the ventricles or the musculature of the ventricles just before they contract to eject the blood. You're probably thinking, why is this important for us to understand cardiac output? And the reason is because the preload or the maximum stretch of the walls of the ventricles is proportional to the amount of blood that gets ejected out of the heart. This is called the Frank-Starling mechanism. The Frank-Starling mechanism and it basically states the more you stretch or fill the heart with blood the stronger that contraction is going to be and the more blood that gets ejected that means the higher the preload so the higher the stretch the greater the stroke volume the greater the stroke volume the greater the cardiac output so preload is directly proportional to cardiac output more filling more contraction more ejection okay now Things that can affect preload include, well, the major thing that affects preload is venous return. So obviously you're gonna have your inferior superior vena cava, that's returning deoxygenated blood from the body back to the heart. And if you have a greater filling, you're going to have a greater preload. If you have a greater preload, you're also gonna have a greater stroke volume and a greater cardiac output. But think about this, if the heart rate starts to pump faster, 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 there's less time for diastole, diastole. So that's less time for filling, which means a reduced preload and also a reduced cardiac output. So you may think, but wait a minute, an increased heart rate should increase cardiac output, and that's true. But if the heart rate increases too quickly, there's less time for filling and a smaller ejection fraction, so a smaller stroke volume. So it is complex, but all you need to be aware of is, for preload, it is, the maximum stretch on the walls of the ventricles immediately before contraction. The greater the stretch, the greater the ejection, the greater the ejection, the greater the cardiac output. That's preload. 